Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is part number 4 of lecture number 15. In the series of lecture number 15, we have been studying a research paper titled New Discretization of Caputo Fabrizio Derivative. In this research paper, authors have devised some numerical approximations for the Caputo Fabrizio derivative with the help of Lagrange interpolation technique. I must suggest you the three parts of lecture number 15. In first part of lecture number 15, I had derived L1 formula to approximate the Caputo Fabrizio derivative. We derived the formula step by step and I had also discussed with you the MATLAB code. And it was shown that L1 formula was having a quadratic rate of convergence. In the second part of lecture number 15, I had derived L1 to formula backward approximation. And then we also derived its MATLAB code and proved the cubic rate of convergence. In third part, we had derived once again L1 to formula via forward approximation and it was also having a cubic rate of convergence as we proved with the help of our MATLAB code. I will provide you the links of those three parts of lecture number 15 in the description box. In today's lecture, we will derive a formula called L1 formula to approximate Caputo Fabrizio derivative with the help of Lagrange interpolation technique and we will prove that this formula is going to have a fourth order of accuracy. Right? So let's go to our presentation to drive the formula step by step and later on I will discuss with you the MATLAB code as well and we will perform some numerical simulations. So here we go with the derivation. In equation 1, we have the definition for the Caputo Fabrizio derivative. The integrand contains first order derivative of a function and an exponential function. Because of the presence of the exponential function, it is said to have a non singular kernel. Now, in this definition, if we replace x by xk, then we will have equation number 2. Now, you can see in equation number 2, we have integration interval from 0 to xk. We will break it into several subintervals in the next slide. So, this is what you see in equation number 3. So, our first integral is from x0 to x1, second is from x1 to x2, and so on and so forth. Now, in equation 4, I have written equation 3 in a compact form with the help of this summation notation. So, j starts from 1 and ends at k. So, if you open equation number 4, you will be back to equation number 3. So, this is how we have written the compact form of equation number 3. Now, in equation 4, Inside the integrand, you can see there is a first order derivative. So, we will replace this first order derivative by quadratic Lagrange interpolation polynomial that passes through the three points as you see on the screen. So, these are the three points through which the quadratic polynomial is passing. So, from our knowledge of classical numerical analysis, we know that such kind of quadratic polynomial through Lagrange technique can be written in this highlighted equation. So here authors have restricted the above interpolation to the interval tj minus 1 to tj and this is what you see in, on the, in equation number 4 where the integration limits are from xj minus 1 to xj. Okay, I must have used here x because instead of t, I, I was using the variable x here. So, that doesn't matter actually. Now, here j starts from 1 and ends at k and this is what you see in the summation sign. 
okay now once again from our knowledge of classical numerical analysis we have these relations equation 5 since x not is 0 so that is why xj can be written as j times h and these two other equations as well now i am going to substitute these relations into this quadratic polynomial and if i do so i will have this equation number 6 now i am going to differentiate this equation number 6 with respect to x and if i do so i will have this red color equation wherein once again we can use those relations i mean xj can be replaced by j times h xj minus one half can be replaced by j minus one half times h and so on so forth so if we do so we will have this green color equation okay in this green color equation i have not yet uh, replaced these x by those relations rather i have collected the terms with x variable okay and now i am going to use the relations and if i do so i will have this blue color equation i mean equation number seven now substitute this equation number seven into equation number four from the previous slide so you will have this equation okay so now in the next slide i am going to replace this derivative this two as a subscript of this capital pi shows that the second uh, order polynomial is being used so let's substitute equation number seven into equation number four and if we do so we will have this equation where i have substituted the quadratic lagrange in the simplified form i mean its derivative and we already have the exponential function in the definition now this exponential function will come with both of the terms i mean with the term having s variable and those terms that are without s variable fine so we will have two terms here and now i can assign this integral with the first exponential and with the second exponential function because these are the only terms involving the s variable so if i do so i will have equation number eight and now it's time to integrate I have integrated both of the terms while in the first one I have used the fundamental theorem of calculus I mean I have substituted the upper and lower limit whereas in the second integral I have just integrated now in the next equation I will apply the fundamental theorem of calculus so we have this equation number nine and now if I apply this rule for the second uh, this part if I use the rule over here, then I will have equation number 10, while rest of the things are same. Now, equation 10, you saw that minus lambda was uh, being appeared in the denominator. So, I have taken outside and I have written it over here, minus lambda. Whereas, once again, rest of the things are same. So, we have equation number 11. Now, from the first slide, we knew that lambda is equal to minus alpha upon 1 minus alpha. So, I had substituted that value and I am left with alpha in the denominator over here. Once again, remaining terms are still same. So, we have this equation number 12. Now, equation number 12, you can see that it is quite lengthy. So, what I have done, I have used this delta notation, the Greek uh, symbol for exponential function having xj and then wherever xj minus 1 in the exponential function appears i have replaced that with delta j minus k and if i do so in equation number 12 i will have finally equation number 13 on your screen and now we know that m of alpha is a normalization factor and we also know that in many research papers discussing about the Caputo Fabrizio differential operator involving the very first paper of Caputo Fabrizio, they have taken this normalization factor to be one. So we are going to do the same thing. And finally, we have our L12 method via central approximation to approximate the Caputo Fabrizio derivative is now in front of you. So this was a derivation 
for the L12 method via central approximation. So the method that you see on the screen, if you compare this method with the method proposed by authors in the research paper, you will find no difference. This is the same method. The authors have given the method directly without going through any sort of derivation. So you saw that about eight to nine slides are required to reach at the final form of this method. So it is. Uh, it was taking a lot of time to to reach at the final L12 method. So I would suggest that you must do it with your own hands if you are interested in driving the method on your own. Okay. So it was all about the derivation, and now I am going to show you the MATLAB code how it works, and let me also tell you that. In the research paper, authors have not actually performed any sort of simulation for the method L12 method via central approximation. So I can't compare my results, but we can still verify as we know that authors claim that the L12 method via central approximation is having a fourth order of accuracy. So at least we can verify that. I will show you how we can verify. Okay, fine. So let's start to understand the code. As usual, you see on line number 11, we have some necessary commands. On line number 18, I have a step size 0 0.1. And then on line number 22, we have initial value. Final value on line number 25. Interval on line number 28. First value till last one with the step size H. After that, Line number 31 is what you require for the number of steps denoted by K. And then fractional order 0 0.1 has been taken. This is normalization factor M of alpha that I had shown you on the slide. It is 1. And then lambda minus alpha upon 1 minus alpha. We have W is equal to 4 which, which, because it is going to be used here inside this cosine function. This is the function that I am going to differentiate. And we are going to obtain its approximate derivative. And now the main part of the algorithm starts. On line number 56, you have the index that starts from 1 and ends at k. And this is same as we have in the presentation. Yes, j starts from 1 and it ends at k. Okay, so now what you see from line number 58 till 68 is what I have broken the terms of this scheme in number of terms. So let me tell you that this capital B stands for all the terms that are highlighted with the blue color. Okay, that you see from here, from here up to here. All of the terms that are in blue are given the name capital B. Likewise, R1 is this first part, delta JK, and this R2 is the second part, that is delta J minus 1K, okay? And then G stands for all the terms that are given with the green color on the slide. So we have all these terms over here on line number 64. And finally, line number 66, all the terms that are in the purple color over here. Okay, on the slide, you can see the last bracket with the purple color. All of these terms I have coded here and then I have assigned a, a name capital P. And then all of these letters are substituted in the final scheme that you have just saw uh, that you have just seen on the slide. Okay, so it is not actually difficult to write the code of the central approximation. Now, as usual, I have introduced a symbol X and then on line number 79, I have used the definition for the Caputo Fabrizio derivative that I had shown you on the very first slide. So that is the same definition I have used on line number 79 on this M file. Fine, so after this, I will convert the answer, the exact answer into double precision. And then on line number 89, I have computed the absolute error that is being computed at the final mesh point, which is 2 here. Okay, don't forget the authors have also taken 
capital T, I mean the final mesh point, the final point of the interval as 2. Okay, so line number 89 would give me absolute error that occurs at the final mesh point. After that, finally, I have displayed the results and then line number 101, all the results will be displayed on the command window. I mean, in the first column, we will see number of steps. Second column, num uh, that would be the step size, exact answer, approximate answer, and then absolute error. So this is all about the code of this L12 method via central approximation. Let's run the code. I'm going to press the run button and I'm going to look at the results on the command window. Here we go. We have the steps that are 20, the step size 0 0.1, exact answer, approximate answer, and then we have the absolute error which is 2.9514 10 to the power minus 7. Now, how can we verify that it has a fourth order of accuracy? There are many ways, but let me show you two of those. So the first one, uh, I'm going to also copy this and give it a name, say E1. Okay, save this. And now I'm going to reduce the step size from 0.1 to 0 0.01 and I'm going to run the script again. If I have the absolute error that has a four, uh, that has a decrease of four orders of magnitude, then it will be confirmed that the method has a fourth order of accuracy. Right now it is 10 to the power minus 7. So I must expect 10 to the power minus 11. Let's run the code and then see, yes, we have, look at this, we have 10 to the power minus 11, so four orders decrease. So this is actually proving the fourth order of accuracy of this L12 method via central approximation. Another way of proving it uh, is if I had the 0 0.1, now if I'm having the step size and solving or just running the script again, let me see what I'm going to get. I have this amount of error. So now I had E1 already, okay? And then I have this error and let me denote it by E2. So if I use the formula log2 E1 divided by E2, then the result is about four, you can see. Okay, so this is another way to show that a method has a fourth order of accuracy. We have a number approximately equal to four. So these are the two different ways to prove the rates of convergence. So we have proved that the L12 method via central approximation is having a fourth order of accuracy. So now we have discussed the fourth part of lecture number 15. And now we will have a final section of this lecture number 15 wherein i'm going to solve the linear and non-linear subdiffusion equations with the help of l1 formula having quadratic rate of convergence and l12 formula backward approximation having cubic rate of convergence and we will compare our simulations with the simulations that are given in this research paper, authors have solved some partial differential equations with L1 and L12 method and presented the results graphically and in some tables. So we will also do the same thing with the help of MATLAB code. So that will be the final part of lecture number 15. If you have any questions or queries, please do comment in the comment box. Thank you so much for watching the lecture.